In the previous video, I showed you the first steps in moth genitalia dissection. In this video, I'll show you some optional extra steps, including staining. If you're satisfied with your dissection and have an ID, all that's left to do is store the genitalia. I use small plastic capsules to store them. After putting both the genitalia and abdomen in the capsule, I add a drop or two of glycerol to keep them from drying out. I then add a rubber cap. There's often a trapped air bubble, so you need to let it escape as you push down on the cap to prevent the cap from popping right back off. The capsule can then be pinned beneath the specimen for long-term storage. This is an alternative to slide mounting genitalia, which takes much more time and is more permanent. If you want to stain the genitalia, a few things need to be prepared before you start. First thing I do is I fill a deep dish with 70% ethanol for clean instruments and removing excess stain from the genitalia. I also fill a shallow watch glass with ethanol to examine the genitalia under the microscope. Next, I add a few drops of the stain ESNY to a small piece of glassware with wells. It's good practice to do this over a paper towel. The stain is super strong and could easily discolor the table or lab bench. Now I can take the genitalia and abdomen and submerge them in the ESNY to begin the staining process. This can take about 7 to 10 minutes at room temperature, or about 3 seconds in the microwave, to set the stain. After the stain is set, I will quickly dip the genitalia and abdomen into ethanol to remove some of the excess ES and Y, before transferring them to a watch glass for cleaning. Using a fine brush and forceps, I will try to expel as much of the excess stain as I can from the abdomen. ES and Y stain sclerotized structures in orange or pink color. I can now add a few drops of Corazol Black to the glassware. Corazol Black is a much stronger stain and should be treated with extra caution. It stains membranous structures blue. I dip both the abdomen and the genitalia in Clorazol Black for about 7 seconds, never letting go of it with my forceps, as they can become almost impossible to find again if you let them go. Again, I dip them in ethanol to remove any excess stain before transferring them to a watch glass for further cleaning. It's often easiest to wait to separate the genitalia from the abdomen until after staining. I demonstrated how to do this in the previous video. The phallus can be carefully removed at this point if useful for identification or if it's in the way of a necessary structure. Another optional step is cutting the abdomen to make a pelt. Using a fine pair of Vanna scissors, I cut lengthwise between the sternites and tergites to open up the abdomen.
If you want, the genitalia can be placed in a shallow weld microstrip slide with ethanol and covered with a glass trevor slip to view them pressed flat or for photography. After this is done, the stained genitalia can be returned to a glycerol filled capsule pinned beneath the specimen. The process for females is similar to males with one significant exception. After staining with both ESN Y and Horizol Black, the genitalia need to be removed from the abdomen. This can be done by making two small lateral incisions with fan of scissors between the 7th and 8th abdominal segments. Next, I carefully insert the scissors into one of these incisions and carefully cut across the ventral membrane. I then flip the abdomen over and do the same with the dorsal membrane, taking care not to accidentally cut the ductus bursa in the process. I can then pull the genitalia, including the 8th abdominal segment, out from the abdomen. Sometimes the corpus bursa has excess stain or spermatophore trapped inside. To solve this, you can make a small incision in the wall of the ductus bursa to physically remove the spermatophore or let the excess stain out. While it's distaining further, I can cut the abdomen in the same way I did for the male, removing its strenuous tissue in the process. Also just like as in the male, I can place the genitalia under a cover slip in a shallow weld microstrip slide for photography or closer examination. That's all for this DIY entomology series. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new.